Hello everyone, Pallets from here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. I wanted to give you guys a little demonstration of what I've been working on for the past few days. Uh, and it's probably not going to be perfect. None of this is probably going to be perfect, but it's, I've gotten to the point where all I've done is focus on this for two days. And I'm mentally exhausted. <laughs> and I just can't, I can't do it anymore. So we're going to release a video with my new audio setup. I replaced my compressor, my limiter, my mixer. I replaced my uh, XLR cables because there was an issue somewhere in there. And uh, we have new hardware. I have it ba as balanced as I'm going to get it right now. Of course, there's always things that can be improved. And I am working with some new plugins inside of OBS. And I'm trying to replicate the live Heroes of the Storm experience. Now, I've been pretty lucky to be able to attend quite a few Heroes events, everything from the North American and European Championships to the live games of HGC at BlizzCon each year, as well as some of the events at the Blizzard Arena in wherever that is, Burbank, I think. Um, so I'm really lucky in that regard, and I've always been taken back by how good their audio sounds. Things in the game are very loud and bassy, and I'm probably never going to be able to replicate that entirely, but this is my first attempt. So this is what we got. While I'm walking around, things should not be very loud at all. You shouldn't hear too much of anything happening unless I look up at Malfurion and he's doing something. Now, when I start to auto-attack, that should be extremely noticeable. You should be able to tell right away that some form of damage is being done on the screen. And I've always really been impressed by how loud Mal uh, uh, Kael'thas' trait is here. So, and when abilities start to fly, those should be immediately noticeable and not mistaken for any kind of other noise at all. And as these giant impactful abilities start to flow into these team fights, that should be the forefront of your attention. And I'm just talking slightly over that, narrating what's going on. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. It may not be perfect today, but we sound a hell of a lot better than we did on Wednesday's video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in the Cursed Hollow today. As I mentioned, not everything's going to be perfect in today's video. I'm still going to continue to adjust our audio as we move forward, but this is our baseline that we are starting with. Uh, the friendly team today, Kael'thas, Muradin, Dahaka, Anduin, and Chromie. The enemy team, Imperius, Diablo, The Butcher, and a level 8. Deckard Kane, as well as Nazebo. Do you think Deckard Kane is a new player? I actually played with a new player earlier today. It was fascinating. I just assume every low-level account is a smurf. I assume every single one of them is just someone who's creating a new account. Um, but he was like, yeah, I just started playing. I came over from League. This is like my eighth game. And I was like, oh, that's so exciting. And he was like soaking XP. And I don't know, just made me really happy. Made me really happy. Uh, Imperius got blown the fuck up by our friendly team here. That's always nice to see. Um, basically, what I'm trying to accomplish with this video is kind of setting a precedent for myself because I consider Kael'thas to be one of my best mages, right? And I said I wanted to make it, you know, I wanted Orphea to be one of my best mages. And we recently did some videos for Gul'dan and some videos for Falstad. And I consider them to be some of my best mage characters in this game as well. So I'm just trying to continue to refine kind of my top picks for caster damage in this game. Uh, you know, whether or not we actually make any meaningful difference. Di 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 yeah, any meaningful difference, you know, remains to be seen, but I'm trying, I'm trying to improve. I really am. And hopefully you can see that. So, some tips for Kael'thas if you are trying to win the solo lane like this is to use your traits on your living bombs in the early game. That is going to allow us to get free living bombs that cost absolutely no mana. And we can just use them to harass our enemy adversary over and over and over and over every six seconds. So, as long as we dodge the spiders from the Zebo, which we've been doing a pretty decent job of doing, He's put in a position where he is taking guaranteed damage from our point and click ability and being forced out of the lane over and over and over again. And we're going to try to maintain that for as long as possible. So every time he steps up, boom. And we just try to... Oh. 
That's why he sprayed. But fuck up. <laughs> Come on, there it is. There it is. There. It is. Don't you fucking bait me. I'm Salami or Shalinore. All right, feels good, man. Feels good. We're gonna pick up Netherwind at level four, mainly because I have to. <laughs> I've gotten so used to the range on our E ability with this talent that it's very difficult for me to play without that talent. So what we're trying to accomplish is every time our trait is off cooldown, we want to be using it on a free living bomb here in the early game. There is an objective that's gonna be on the bottom side of the map. I think I'm gonna make my way down for it. I want this region globe first. So that means I have to stop him from getting it. Got it. We good. Eh, maybe I'll stay. Because he's staying. He probably has a sippy. Um, we win? We won! I'm away. Sorry, team. Was getting kills up in the top lane. So, uh, our Q ability is Flame Strike. It is a skill shot AoE. We put that AoE on the ground, and after a delay, it blows up. Our W ability, as you may have discerned so far, is a damage over time effect that it's a point and click. If that, blow when that blows up on an enemy, if another enemy is nearby, it will spread as well. Our E ability is a skill shot stun, which we have been using actually very, very well today, I would say. This is a dead Diablo here. Um, and our, maybe not dead, holy shit. Our trait allows us to augment spells, and each spell that we decide to augment reacts a little bit differently. So if we use our trait on our Q ability, it makes the radius bigger. This is unfortunate. If we use our trait on our E ability, it allows us to go through multiple targets. So we can CC two enemies instead of just one if we augment our E. And if we augment our W ability, it gives us a free cast, no mana cost, and it doesn't consume the cooldown. So it would normally be a 10 second cooldown to use Living Bomb if you're just casting it normally. But by augmenting it with the Veridin Spheres, we are able to get a six second cooldown on our Living Bomb, which can be quite powerful. Chromie is doing an amazing amount of damage so far in this game. That's awesome. That's really cool to see. The next tribute's gonna be up in the top lane, so we are in the right location for that as we gather one more region globe. Our level one talent requires us to have basically as many region globes as possible. So uh, as long as we continue to focus on this throughout the game, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Our Verdant Spheres is up in just a moment. Looks like the enemy team is coming to try to cut me off from my entrance into this fight here. I think I was hit with the spiders that time. I was. Deku came trying to zone us out here as well. Trying to dodge that from Imperius, but failing miserably and taking a lot of damage as a result. Looks like the Butcher's coming in on me as well, so we're not going to make it out of here, but these guys are very deep in enemy lines. Doesn't matter. Is it going to be enough? I certainly hope so. Okay, so we're going to have to give a little more focus to Imperius and make sure that we are positioning better versus him, because if he lands that stun, the Butcher's getting a guaranteed stun as well. All right. All right, team. I will not underestimate them again. Let's make our way to the middle lane and try to clear that out because it looks like they already have that. I was being a little overconfident. I cannot believe how much damage Chromie has done so far this game. That's so cool. That's so awesome to see. Because I feel like Chromie's super fucking hard these days. Two region globes here, and we will clear this lane out. The friendly team is fighting. Maybe we come in for the flank. How's this looking? I mean, that's a Deckard kill. If we want to... Nope, 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 nope. Dodge. Oh, I didn't dodge. Didn't... Fuck! Ah, I just wanted to help! Oh. Oh, God, I'm feeding. Oh, no! Okay. All right, we're going to stop. Chris, dude, Imperius has my fucking number, and he is calling. Ugh. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, let's go to the bottom lane. <laughs> let's get away from Imperius. Both teams hitting level 10 within a few seconds of each other. 
uh, versus this particular team comp, I actually wouldn't hate Pyroblast. I wouldn't hate it. They only have one ice block. Looks like the friendly team might be rotating down for a gank here. We dodged the spiders, so we're fine. We're at 15 out of the... I'm going to take it. Maybe not. I'm not going to take it. We're going to go with the phonics. There's some decent CC on Azebo. He should be taking a lot of damage from that. We lost our Chromie, so I have to be our damage. I have to be our damage. Chromie's not here. We did pick up two kills on the enemy team, which is pretty great. Our Dahaka is currently channeling, and it looks like the enemy team is just going to give us this one. Ha! Dismount. Okay. I'm not too happy with how I've been surviving in these team fights. I'm sure you guys are very much aware of that. I've been talking about it a lot. We're going to try to do a little better. Play a little more cautious, not be so far up. At least that is the plan. That being said, I do want to push this guy back from the region globes to make sure I get those. We're sitting at 18 right now. 18 right now. I think what happened is I got really confident in my laning phase. Like, I was doing really well. I was 1v1ing multiple people, and it felt good. Shall we see who gets um, enough tribute but then time? it all kind of went to shit. All kind of went to shit. He's popping his ult. Really? What's the cooldown on that? Which is still in middle lane, so we, uh, we don't have to worry about being rotated on. I think they're just giving us this tribute. Those guys still aren't moving down. So they're gonna get a they're gonna get a fort, but we potentially could get all the forts. I don't know if that's a good trade for them. Uh, the butcher is above me, we know that. Dodge the toads. Trying not to get rooted. The phonix is down. And we get life grip to safety. So, I guess I started doing this phonics joke and I didn't explain it. So there's that new movie coming out for uh, the new X-Men movie. It's the Dark Phoenix. <laughs> and I just keep saying that she's hooked on phonics. <laughs> it's not funny at all, but I just, <laughs> I just keep doing it. Protected, by the way, is protecting all of us here. We're going to CC this Diablo to make sure he can't get away, and that's going to be a very easy kill. We do see the stay a while coming out from the enemy Deckard. Doesn't look like that's going to cause too much problems for us at the moment. Uh, we do have another free living bomb if we need it. I'm going to use it now. Didn't miss the follow-up CC on that Nazebo, but that's okay. Imperius opted to stay in the top lane, didn't get the building gave us the objective and now we can get a lot of buildings one thing i really like about kelthos is as the game progresses his spell priority changes as well so as you continue to make your way through these matches what your focus is is going to alter so at the beginning of the game getting those free w's were extremely important to us but as the game progresses our flame strike becomes much much more impactful than it was at the beginning of the game now we can still come in here and, oh, that's unfortunate. I mean, I was right by four people. I mean, I didn't move up to the top. Was that my fault? We'll say that was my fault. Okay. All right, I'll take credit for that. Um, so as the game progresses, casting our W abilities is mostly used for just the cooldown reduction that it's going to give us because of this pyromaniac talent. Now that we're able to reduce our ability cooldowns by having the living bombs up, we're still, we still can use our traits on those, but instead of casting our living bomb first, our Q ability comes the, becomes the priority. And with this particular setup, Kilthos is actually extremely well equipped for just taking camps. So I should have thrown out my Q first, admittedly, should have done that. But we can solo these camps pretty easily under the right circumstances. And those right circumstances are, hopefully, me not dying here to prove my point. Now, as we get more and more ability power from leveling up, and of course, as we have Arcane Barrier, that'll be easier and easier. I should have focused down the mage a little bit faster than mage was giving them spell power or spell armor. So that could have been better. It wasn't a very good demonstration. I get that. This whole video hasn't been a very good demonstration because I've been dying to the butcher because I can't position properly. 
Well, we're gonna work on that, boys. We're gonna work on that. The enemy team is ahead on XP, even though we got the first objective, and we did absolutely no pushing with the first objective. So everything I was saying about Imperius not getting any value is untrue, objectively, because he's done more siege than we have. We are going to start to push down their buildings here, though, and we're gonna be putting our living bomb on as much stuff as possible to reduce the cooldown of our flame strike. Now, by completing our level one quest, we actually get a very big health shield. Really? Really? Well, that time you were just greedy. That was just fucking greedy. Uh, I should have a living bomb here to stop him from moving. I don't have it. All right, let's get out of that route. Does that reach? Oh, it does! I didn't know that reached. I can interrupt Deckard whenever I feel like it. That's pretty good. Looks like he is going to make it out. I probably could have Phoenixed that and we could have probably secured that kill, but you know what? I didn't do it. Uh, I'm gonna stand here and try to take over this camp as soon as possible, as fast as possible. The friendly team is all around me, so I feel pretty confident in doing just that. And it looks like we will take it no problem. I'll even Phoenix this just to make sure it is indeed no problem. The Gargantuan is beating me up a little bit, but that's A-OK. -okay. The objective up at the top of the map, we don't necessarily need to go up there. What the fuck is this guy doing? What the fuck? Looks like he is backing up now. Coming to the objective now. Dehaka was able to burrow, and he's going to grab that, no problem. The Butcher chasing Anduin down at the bottom of the screen, so we're going to make sure he doesn't engage on him. Um, let us go with Fury of the Sunwell. This is going to cause our Q ability, our Flame Strike, to impact twice. Wow, look at that living bomb value, boys. Look at that. So, again, I was talking about our priorities shifting as the game progresses. This is one of the ways that it does that. We're able to do double the damage with our Q ability than we were doing before. We'll go ahead and try to CC this gazebo. We still have our shield if we need it. It doesn't look like we need it. That was a great protected from our Anduin. Uh, so we could choose to still continue to augment our W ability to get more cooldown reduction, or we could choose to increase the size of our flame strike and have that hit a giant area like that multiple times. It's kind of up to you. For instance, when we're pushing into Siege Wall, maybe it's more useful to hit both towers with our Q ability. Or maybe we want to just throw more flame strikes out if we feel like we can stay in that area for a large amount of time. The butcher on the enemy team is still dead. I'm trying not to feed. Uh, we do have our arcane barrier ready to go so we can mitigate damage. And as we continue to pick up these region globes as the game progresses, the amount of shielding we get from that arcane barrier will also continue to increase. So just because our quest is done does not mean, that doesn't mean we're off the hook. We still have to continue to strive for as much mana as possible because of course we are a mana addict. The Butcher looking to engage here, I'm sure. Good route going out on to our Anduin. The bomb is spreading. Actually, no, no it's not this time. So for instance, this guy right here, double flame strike on the Gargantuan, the Gargantuan is dead. You gonna back up? What are you doing? Ah, I thought I dodged the spiders. Okay, well, Arcane Barrier the spiders. Rotate back up to our team. That was a good zombie wall. It was just a second too late. I love the ragdolls that happen inside of the Sands of Time or whatever that Chromie ability is called. All right, we're finally starting to get some abilities in. We're finally starting to get some fucking kills in. Feels good, man, feels good. Let's grab some more region globes here. That was actually a very big minion wave. We got three region globes out of that. I think one was from our team, though. Uh, Nazebo and Diablo at the top of the map defecated Imperius down at the bottom. So the Butcher unaccounted for it. We should always assume that the Butcher is coming to kill us. One flame strike on the mini wave will give us one more region globe, bring, bringing our total up to 32 here right now. The tribute. Let's go. I was going to say join the team, but we should probably head down to the bottom lane. So while this objective is about to happen, I would like to take over this camp. Now, we have the double we have the double flame strike eruption now. So we can go ahead and arcane barrier this with both of our living bombs out. That's most things dead already. One more flame strike, double living bomb. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. That's a super fast camp clear. That's super quick. I am gonna ping for some health. 
and I hope that he comes to heal me. We don't have our arcane barrier. He is channeling right now. Let's go ahead and stop this guy from rotating in. Man, if that landed, I would have felt like a badass, but he wasn't. They, they didn't go that way. They didn't go that way. Uh, Deckard and Nazebo just grabbed the vision here. Looks like the Butcher and Diablo are in the middle lane. Um, we do see R, the Haka, potentially going for a kill on Deckard, but it doesn't quite line up there. And the Butcher in a bad spot. Did as much damage as I could. Nice CC from Dahaka, keeping him inside of the Phoenix, and that's going to be an easy kill. As we continue to move into the bottom lane, I want that region globe. So Q first, and then augment living bombs to get more Q cooldown reduction. This is our fastest way of sieging. Trade off cooldown. We once again save that for double living bombs so we can throw out another flame strike sooner. Do you get what I mean? Like sometimes in team fights, crocking the burned flesh with the increased area of effect is going to be better. Like hitting both of these guys with a Q would deal more damage than two living bombs probably. I guess I'm gonna have to use my shield on this again. I hate using that shield on spiders, but spiders hit so hard. Uh, we are going to increase our flame strikes range here as well, making it even easier to land our abilities when we decide we need to. Both of those guys taking that increased damage there. Another flame strike going out on Imperius, who is way too far forward. We're gonna throw out a Phoenix here. Nazebo continuing to focus me with all of his spells. Diablo moving forward. We might be able to hit both of these guys here, but they move out of the flame strike at the top right hand side of the screen. Dodge spiders, dodge spiders, dodge spiders, dodge spiders. Land a CC. Here we go. Nice ice block. <laughs> Dude, ice block should show a tally of how much damage you just missed because that guy dodged like two chromie abilities. He dodged one for me. He dodged a murder stun. <laughs> that was probably 3,000 damage mitigated by that ice block there. That's pretty ridiculous. Well, he doesn't have ice block now, unfortunately, for him. Oh, I don't got him. I don't got him. Let him go. Let him go. Don't die for it. All right. Wow, look at that. Look at that. 102,000 Chromey damage. Oh, my God. Nice work, Chromey. That's fucking insane. That is fucking insane. Man, I wish I played that good. Damn. <laughs> yeah, give her the vote. Chromie does 102,000 fucking hero damage, and I'm the only person who votes for it. Thank you. Fuck. Anyway, this was mostly just to test out our new audio setup. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it sounds okay. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but I guess this concludes me making videos for all the mages that I'm comfortable with. Still playing Orpheus, still trying to get used to her. I died way too much in the early game. I had way too aggressive positioning. Uh, but we went from Mana Addict into Netherwind, Burn Flesh, Phonix. See, it's not funny, but I keep doing it. Uh, Pyromaniac, Fury of the Sunwell, and Flamethrower. Thank you guys for joining me today. I will see you again on Monday.